Shaman Omar Williams, born April 5th, 1975. What a success to you. How do you measure it? As a basketball player, is the only success achieved by making it to the NBA? Would you rather make the NBA be unappreciated for your success in the media and amongst the fans, be unhappy with how people view you, or would you rather have a short career, move on with your happiness because now you're able to do what you knew or wasn't aware would make you fulfilled? Shaman Williams is an outstanding former drummer and French horn player that didn't exactly measure his success by making the NBA at first. He just wanted to show people he was good at it, that he was good at anything he put his mind to. Shaman's real dream was to work as a Wall Street, fast talking, could sell you anything type of guy in a nice three piece suit. We all have dreams of being something. The masses will have you think making the league is the be all end all. Our passion tells us something totally different. Either way, Williams did make the NBA, and he did out of some of the toughest circumstances. The cousin of Kevin Garnett was born in Brooklyn, New York, and was raised in Nickeltown and West Greenville, South Carolina, where as a kid, he was ultra competitive and even recommended a psychologist for how angry he'd get if he wasn't the absolute best in the classroom. He wasn't crazy, and he didn't have a disorder. Some kids just know what they want earlier than others, and what Williams wanted more than anything was to be the best. He had a roller coaster college career where he played with legendary players at that level and was an NBA draft pick that saw some success, but not like many expected him to. Was his growth stunted? Yeah, it was. Why? Alright, let's get into it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Stunt number one, not my first choice. I'd say the first stunt in the ultra competitive, high personality character that is Shaman Williams was that he wasn't a natural or didn't play enough of the point guard throughout his career. At 6'1", he wasn't much of a passer at any point beginning from high school all the way through to the NBA. In high school, Williams was actually not highly recruited all through his four years. He then attended Fort Union Military Academy, a prep school in Virginia that led him to garnering the attention from all the big schools in the country, including Rick Pitino and Louisville, and of course Dean Smith and the North Carolina Tar Heels. Shaman stepped into the program where he was met by his first stunt face to face in the form of Jeff McGinnis, a sophomore point guard, and Donald Williams, a senior combo guard that were both in front of him that season. It's not that Williams couldn't play the point, it's that he never really was put in that position or given the opportunity enough to hone that skill. At North Carolina, he'd never fully get the chance to man the position he'd be suited for later in his career and it sort of hurt him in the long run. Playing the point guard is not an easy job and takes a lot of experience to understand all that's required of you. It's not just about bringing the ball up the floor and passing it to teammates. You have to be vocal, you have to be a leader, you have to understand timing, shot clocks, when players need their touches, where they excel with those touches, pace of the game, all while dealing with the defense sometimes hounding you 94 feet up the court. You have to essentially be just as up to speed with the plays as the head coach, or even more. Sounds like a lot, right? It is. I have tons of respect for a guy that can excel at that position, especially at a level like North Carolina, where you have some of the best talent in amateur sports all on one team. How do you become good at it? Well, it takes time. It takes experience doing it. And that's why I think even if a player may not agree is where Shaman fell short. Think about it like a GM. If I have a guy that's the right size of a point guard, has the skills I need of a point guard, has the same qualities, only this second player played the position all through high school and college. If I need a point guard to run my team, I'm going with the second guy. Especially if player out of position, that's the way it is. Stunt number two, hand in hand. Another stunt in Williams' career, in my opinion, was the fact that he never really excelled in any one particular area on the floor. Like I said, you can be out of position and still excel in the league, a la Allen Iverson, my favorite player of all time. Iverson was clearly a shooting guard in a point guard's body. The guy was listed at six foot, and we all know that was a stretch, but was probably, nah, not probably. 
He was definitely the best little man scorer to ever touch a basketball. He was super fast, super quick, super deceptive on offense and defense, had surprisingly good instincts on the offensive end even though he missed his entire senior season in high school due to being in jail. He didn't have the best form, I mean he kind of shot it with two hands but man, I haven't seen a guy that was as good a shooter, scorer and had as much heart as he had. It was simply amazing what he could do at that size. Williams lacked having that thing about him that could make him stand out. As a freshman, he played the backseat to more sophomore. He averaged just 1.7 points a game and 4 minutes as a freshman, and 8 points in 20 minutes as a sophomore. With McGinnis dominating time at the point junior season, he was free to do a lot more, with Jeff now gone to the league and took advantage of the opportunity. But once again, to my first point, he wasn't able to play much time at the point with now freshman and UN 16.1 points a game, shot an astounding 41% from three, played 32 minutes and 4.4 assists on the year. He was also the ACC tournament MVP in which he deems as his greatest college achievement team all ACC that year. With a solid season in the books, in the grand scheme, it still didn't show he could excel in one particular area of the game, and this would be very important later down the line. Stunt number three, the sum of it all. Shaman Williams' third stunt, when it pertains to why he didn't last in the NBA or had the career many expected him to have, is because the sum of everything he lacked came to affect his circumstances in the league, beginning with the 1998 NBA draft. As a senior, he had the best scoring year at 16.8 points a game and overall shooting year when you factor field goals, three-point shooting, and free throw shooting. He became the record holder for multiple shooting categories such as most threes in a game, most three-point field goals in a career which has since been broken by Marcus Page, and highest free throw percentage for a season and also career. He would enter the 98 draft and missed out on the first round by five selections, picked 34th overall. What this meant was that teams weren't so sure about the UNC product, mainly for reasons I mentioned before. He wasn't really a point guard or big enough and possessed the skills great enough to play the shooting guard position full time in the NBA and he didn't do any one thing special enough and so the uncertainty caused teams to not offer him a guaranteed contract leading to him becoming a journeyman and not having a sure spot on a roster. This can stunt your growth because a player needs stability sometimes in order to fully show what he's got. It doesn't always come in one season or two, especially a guy with not much experience at a position they wanted him to play. Drafted by the Chicago Bulls, traded to the Hawks, then Sonics, Denver, New Orleans, Magic, Williams was everywhere in his five, six year NBA career, culminating in a stint with the Lakers in 06, 07. He would never come close to averaging at least 10 points per game in his career and more than 5 assists a game except for the year in Denver when he averaged 9.4 and 5 assists. He'd go on to play overseas where he was the Euro Challenge All-Star MVP in 2005. He went on to become an assistant coach at Tulane and Western Kentucky before becoming a successful real estate agent, helping people in his community retain their homes from the threat of gentrification. All in all, Shaman was a really good player, whom many of you wanted to know what happened to. Well, to bring it full circle, he found true success, and at the end of the day, he wears those three-piece suits he once dreamed of now on a daily basis, and proudly. Salute to him, I wish him all the best, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunner Growth, and I'm out.